Hello everyone and welcome back to Zachary Educational Channel. So in this video we are going to know some of the very frequently asked important questions in the UGC NET Environmental Science paper. Yes, this video is going to be very very helpful in the examination. So get ready with your notes so that you can write down all these important points which we are going to discuss in this video. So without wasting much time, let's start today's video. Before starting today's video, I would like to remind you that there are several videos in which we have done the rapid revision, mega revision, in which we have discussed several frequent last questions, very very important for the UGC NET environmental science paper. So this you think, so these things you should go through before going for the exam because these are very very important and will definitely help you in the examination. So the link I will provide in the i button, the playlist you should go through that and then you will be very very confident after going through all this video. So this question was asked from the ecology section and this was new for most of the students. The question was which of the following food waves are defined on the basis of the impacts of species on the structure of community. So food wave we all know but here it was asking the food waves defined on the basis of the impact on the species. So here the options were connectedness wave, energy flow food wave, functional food wave or community food wave. So here I will tell you the answer and we will know the concept in the next slide. Here the correct option will be option number 3. Functional food waves are defined on the basis of impacts of one species on the structure of the community. So let's move on to the next slide to know the concept. So here comes the picture where you can note down the important notes on the type of food wave. First is connectedness wave. As you can see here from all the organisms here it is given. So for example, whom is eaten by whom? So who eats whom? That is the connectedness wave which shows feeding relationship among organisms. It is not showing the impact of one species on the community of an ecosystem. It is showing who is eating whom. That is the feeding kind of wave that is connectedness wave. Next is energy flow wave. The energy is flowing from whom to whom from which tropic level to which tropic level. It is seen in the case of energy flow wave. So it shows the connection quantified as energy flux. So to know the connection between the energy transfer we prefer the energy flow wave. But coming to the functional wave what happens is it emphasizes the influence of population on growth rates in other population. Yes one species how it is affecting the growth of the other communities it is known with the help of functional wave that means the correct answer of the, our question so how the benthic diatoms are affecting the growth of the strongyloxenectras or catherina if they are more what will happen if they are less what will happen it is not on their feeding habit or the energy it is on the how they influence the population growth rate in the other population so that is functional wave so I hope you are clear now. You can note down this thing. Let's move on to the next important concept. Let me remind you about the four mock test series which will provide a solid revision for the UGC in the environmental science paper. So this quality mock test as per the latest syllabus is available for just Rs. 199. Yes, two simple steps to avail this mock test. You have to pay Rs. 199 to this number 88950035690 and send me the screenshot and then I will provide you the links for the all four mock test. So this question was asked in the last year paper. So the question came from the Gibbs free energy that is the environmental chemistry portion. So the question was choose the incorrect statement. So let us read the statement one by one. First one for a system at equilibrium chemical potential is same in all the phases. So equilibrium means equal all are equilibrium all the chemical potential in all the phases. So that's why this statement is absolutely correct. But here it has asked incorrect. So you should read the questions carefully where it is mentioned correct and incorrect. Second statement was Gibbs free energy change is zero at equilibrium state of a system that means it is talking about delta G at equilibrium. So that is absolutely correct. It is zero at equilibrium state of the system. So these two statements are correct till now. We have to find the incorrect statement. Next is third statement that is Gibbs free energy change is positive for the reaction to occur spontaneously. Is it correct? No. 
it is the incorrect statement among the three statements which we have read till now coming to the next one next is delta g that is change in the gibbs free energy will become more negative with increasing temperature so when we increase the temperature whether the delta g will become more negative yes absolutely correct so option 4 will be also the statement 4 will be also correct so here the incorrect statement is statement number 3 gibbs free energy is negative for the reaction to occur spontaneously but here we should also note down some of the important points the gibbs free energy change that is the formula you should also know because the numericals are also asked from here here the formula is delta g that means change in the gibbs free energy delta means change is equal to delta h that means the change in the enthalpy next is minus delta t s minus delta t s means or we can also say that t is equal to temperature and s is equal to entropy entropy is the degree of randomness so here total change in temperature and randomness if we are subtracting from the change in enthalpy we will get the delta g that is the gibbs free energy change but one more point you should note down if the reaction is carried out under constant temperature that means delta t change in temperature is zero because it is constant temperature then the formula will be like this so it is little bit of change in the formula but it is actually the same here you should know under constant temperature delta g is equal to delta h minus t del s we all know from our school level next the equations if it is asked in some other way we should know the equation is called the gibbs helmholtz equation and when the change in gibbs free energy that is delta g is greater than zero what will happen the reaction is non-spontaneous and endergonic so here you should comment me in the comment section what is the meaning of endergonic and exergonic so next is when the delta g is less than zero that means the reaction is spontaneous and exergonic next is when delta g is equal to zero which was given in the statement also the reaction is at equilibrium that means gives free energy change is zero at equilibrium state of the system so these are important points to note down let's move on to the next important concept this question is from the solid waste management and hazardous waste management control so the question was in the previous question in the waste pollution prevention hierarchy arrange the following from the most preferred to the least preferred option that means in the management of the waste which one is the most preferred that means in terms of environment friendliness which is most preferred and which is less preferred and the options were waste concentration waste separation recycling or reuse waste treatment and landfilling so here you should know the waste hierarchy steps so it starts with prevention we should prevent from using unnecessary things which will cause the waste next is to reduce our waste generation next is reuse our waste recycle recover and finally dispose so this is the waste hierarchy you should note down very important prevent reduce reuse recycle recover and dispose so as per this what will be the sequence what will be the correct hierarchy in the waste management so here it will be number one will be we should recycle or reuse then will be what then will be waste separation we have to separate the waste based on the type of waste then is waste concentration we should know what waste is having what much concentration of that next we will go for the waste treatment after separation we will know which is the concentration of which type of waste then we will treat the waste and finally the leftover thing we will do the landfilling because landfilling is not preferred because it also deteriorates the water and soil quality so that is the least preferred method for the waste pollution prevention so here the option number four will be correct c b a d e first is recycle or reuse waste separation waste concentration measurement waste treatment and finally landfilling i hope you have noted down let's move on to the next important concept next is coming a very chocolate numerical but it is also very very important you should note down this as it is also very frequently asked the question comes like this a sample of air has a relative humidity of 60 percentage given that the saturated vapor pressure of water is 2206 2260 pascal calculate the vapor pressure of the air at 20 degrees celsius so here the options are given here 
1460 Pascal, 452 Pascal, 3767 Pascal or 1356 Pascal. So here the formula to find this type of solution is we have to find the relative humidity. So we have to know how the relative humidity is calculated. It is calculated on the basis of this formula. Vapor pressure divided by saturated vapor pressure. So no need to go into the deep thing of these things. Just know relative humidity is vapor pressure by saturated vapor pressure. It will be given in the question. Multiplied by 100 because it will be always in the percentage. Next here in this question what is given we will know. Relative humidity is given that is RH. RH is given as 60 percentage. Why? Relative humidity 60 percent given in the question. Next is saturated vapor pressure as VP is given 2260 Pascal saturated vapor pressure. So here relative humidity is given saturated vapor pressure is given. We have to find the vapor pressure. So vapor pressure we have to take on the left hand side just substitute the given value and we will get the answer. So here vapor pressure is equal to 60 percentage that is relative humidity multiplied by saturated vapor pressure 2260 pascal divided by 100 that means 100 we have to find in percentage so after solving that we will get the value as 1356 pascal that is the vapor pressure of that air sample so here option 4 will be correct and we will get the full marks so here i would like to tell you one thing is that relative humidity sometimes you will be getting confused whether it will be vapor pressure by saturated vapor pressure or saturated vapor pressure by vapor pressure. So lower value what will be given divided by higher value you will do multiplying by 100 will give you the RH. So sometimes relative humidity will be also asked directly but here we had to find out the vapor pressure. I hope it is clear now. Let's move on to the next important frequently asked question. Next question is coming from the hazardous waste management. It is also very important. So here as per the hazardous waste rule 2016, what are the hazardous waste? Because there was question where statements were given and you have to find what are the waste called as hazardous waste as per the hazardous waste rule 2016. So you should know all these 10 definitions that means 10 points which are the hazardous waste characteristics. Number one, sludge and filter press cake arising out of the production of zinc sulfate and other zinc compound. They are the hazardous waste as per the hazardous waste rule 2016. Residue containing cadmium and arsenic, acidic and alkaline residue, cyanide, nitrate or nitrate containing sludge, mercury bearing sludge is generated from the mercury cell process. So here I would like to tell you that you should do the connected revision. Connected revision means when you are doing or learning something, revising, you have to connect with some other things from that. For example, mercury and hazardous waste. So what can be the disease caused by the mercury poisoning? That is Minamata disease. Yes, very good. So Minamata disease is caused by mercury poisoning. That is also one of the very frequent asked question. The disease caused by the hazardous substance. So like this, you can do the connected revision if you are reading and revising something. Coming to our concept. Next is hazardous waste are chromium bearing residue and sludge. Empty barrels, containers, liners contaminated with hazardous chemical or waste. Chemical containing residue arising from decontamination. Sludge from the wet scrubbers. Wet scrubbers are used for the air pollution control, that device. So from there if the sludge are not treated properly, they are the hazardous waste. Next is exhaust air or gas cleaning residue. So these 10 are the characteristics of the hazardous waste as per the hazardous waste rule 2016. The statements are asked from here, you should note down. So I hope you have learned something from this video and you have enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe the channel exactly for further updates. See you guys in our next video. Till then, keep smiling and believe in yourself.